Afternoon everyone, it's uh, Vaughan Smith at westcobellpottery.ca, uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, my thumb is actually healing, um, I won't show you the other side, it looks a bit rough on the other side, <laughs> but um, uh, so I can throw on the wheel again. Um, and um, while I was uh, recovering from my accident, um, I was sent some tools um, from Bill Wright, artisanpotterytools.com. Uh, for making handles and so obviously I have to make some mugs to put handles on um, So we'll be showing you these later in the video um, and I'm going to throw with Number 516 from Pottery Supply House, which is a white um, Very smooth not porcelain, but very similar uh, Clay body and uh, so let's get you down here so you can see what I'm going to do So you should round it off into a ball if you're a beginner but what I do is I'm just cutting them into little cubes from the bag of clay and then I round off the bottom um, and then bang it down in the center. But honestly, if you're a beginner, you should round this off as much as possible because it's tough enough when you're learning how to center. But there's an easy trick if you're learning how to center. My wheel is set up right next to a solid wall here. It's solid. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, um, it helps me because there's a machine called a Jigger and Jolly which has an arm that comes down and forms clay um, because it's a rigid kind of fastened to a wall and it, the arm comes down and it makes a bowl instantly. And so when I was uh, doing my throwing and um, I was getting some trouble with my shoulders, I decided to put my wheel next to here so I could actually um, have the same similar thing. And there's also a strong arm machine, which I bought, which I don't use uh, unless I'm throwing sinks, which is 25 pounds of clay. But anyway, we've got the clay stuck to the wheel. Make sure it's really stuck so you cannot move it. And then the first thing you do is you seal it to the wheel with your hand just on top like that. And it rounds it off a bit more obviously and then you bring your other hand which is wet and if you push down with that hand it seals the wheel but if you push in with this hand it makes it get narrower and that notice how i'm making that bit of go over the top of the ball and this is on the side and that's the bit that touches the clay so dribble some water on it and do that and if your arm is wedged in you're almost going to be at a center with one hand and it is possible to do that um press down flattens the clay, press in, makes the clay get taller. So if you use both hands together and you even out, I make sure that that whole area is touching the clay and this whole area is touching the clay on top. But I like to be able to see the ball of clay to see it, not just feel if it's in center, but see it and see if it wobbles. So I'm only covering, but I'm, because it's rotating, I'm still touching the entire ball of clay. And so, this hand is resting on the wheel head, see how it cleaned up there? This hand is gonna be connected with the other, with the left hand, and they're gonna press an even amount of pressure. And if I wanna make it get flat, I'll press hard with my top hand. If I want it to get taller, I'll press harder with my side hand. And you can move it around like that, change the pressure, and you should be able to see the ball get taller, shorter, taller, shorter, and so on. So let's do a demo. Wet, down, in, down, in, and that's just changing the pressure on you. And if you don't make it move, that means you're not pressing hard enough. But when you let go, you let go slowly too. Don't just suddenly let go. Let's see what happens if you let go fast. It wobbles. So you let go slowly. When you feel like it stopped wobbling and it doesn't start wobbling again. So that's the principle of centering. So just a quick repeat. If you go down, it gets shorter. If you go in, it goes taller. If you even the, pr the actual pressure together and let go slowly, you're actually going to have a centered ball of clay. Your elbows and your arms, and I have a brick because I'm a short guy, underneath my left leg here so I can lift my leg up. So I'm resting on my arm, my leg rather than the splash plan because that can cause some nerve damage in your arm over years, decades, which I have uh, been told I have some nerve damage in my arms where I don't feel anything. But anyway, and that makes it easy to center if you're resting your arms on something soft and you've got a rigid wall right next to you will really help you. All right, putting a hole in. 
I'd used that finger over the, I banged this finger with a, a, a hammer the other week as well. So, so I've been in the wars. So press down with two fingers and make a little dimple and then let go slowly before it dries out. Put some water in there so you've got plenty of water and actually wet this hand again and push to the bottom leaving about a centimeter. It's better to leave too thick an amount of clay than too thin. And then let go slowly as soon as it feels like it's drying out, which it lasted quite a long time then. And this hand stayed in contact with the wheel and was pushed out by these fingers. So as I was doing that, this hand was, this hand was giving way, this hand was in control. And then I always run my fingertip from the outside edge, little corner there, back to the center. And I usually use two fingers, but you can use one. After I open it up, I just run this, these fingers back in there a couple of times. You just two fingers would do it just as well. And that evens the compression out in the bottom there so it doesn't actually get S cracks later in the firing cycles. Now, we're going to change hands completely because everything's been done on this side of the wheel. And I'm throwing European style in North American where the wheel is rotating anti-clockwise. Then you move to this side. If you press in with your fingers, it'll get shorter, uh, narrower. Just, two, just those two fingers, those and those. Start at the bottom, pulled all the way to the top, it gets narrower. If you do the opposite of that, and you put your fingers on the inside, you can make it get wider, all right? It's better to have a pot, be a ball of, you know, a little form like this, wider at the bottom and narrower as it goes up. It's easier to control. So try not to make it get wider. And that is really hard to do. But when you're learning to throw, you usually end up making balls rather than mugs because the clay just naturally with centrifugal force wants to get wider. So your job is to keep it narrow. So a lot of times, if you're a bit um, having difficulty with it, keeping it narrow, if you deliberately narrow it like this to start, then your first pull shouldn't get it too wide. So you wet both sides, make sure your fingers are wet. And these two fingers are gonna be opposite those two fingers. These ones are going right to the bottom corner and these are starting right at the bat head. So watch what happens if you press your fingers together at 45 degrees. These ones are kind of flat, but this one's at 45 degrees. And pull up, putting pressure to the fingertips. The inside fingers are a little higher than the outside fingers, but they're pretty much level. And then when you get to the top, you let go slowly and put your finger right at the top edge and press that clay back down to compress it and thicken the rim just a bit. And it'll help you out because a lot of problems arise from the rim being too thin. Same again. I never take that first pull taller than my fingers I push pressure on the inside and I push out this time because I'm trying to make a little belly. And now I'm going to start pushing with the outside fingers back in. And we have that little belly shape that you see in almost everywhere in pottery studios. All right, that's a mug. So, this is that regular wooden rib that you get in most pottery packs. I have actually shaved my, it's more of a right angle when you get it. I have sanded off that curve, um, that sort of corner shape to a more of a curve there. So you can see instead of a right angle, I've, I've cut off the little square bit here. So it's more of a curve. I push this in at the bottom. And I push that. In from the outside and I instantly create a foot. And on a little side note here, I was watching videos this afternoon and I saw one from one of my subscribers called Sally Roper in Jamaica. Hi Sally, you have a beautiful setup for a studio there right over the ocean. Your ocean is turquoise and bright blue and mine is gray and somber. <laughs> we occasionally get blue, not today. Okay, the, the belly is a nice shape, so I'm just going to take the water off this one. And I'm going to belly out a bit more just there. 
so I didn't change it much, we had such a nice shape, I thought I'll leave it. And then the top, I take the metal rib, I'm just using the metal rib to drag the water off basically. And that gives you a little extra shoulder there. And then sponge gets all the water out, don't forget to take the water out. And then I just roll it over. A lot of people use the leather at this point to smooth the rim, but this clay is so smooth, you know, I don't need to do that. All right, that's a nice little mug. And to take it off, if you're a beginner, you might want to just cut through it and slide it off carefully. But over time, you should be able to do this, which is you draw water around it and then make the wheel go very slowly and pull the wire through slowly. And and it will release with the wire and come to the edge and stop the wheel at that point. And of course you've got to be very sensitive with the foot pedal so that you don't actually go too fast. I will do my studio mug next. I have one mug that I call my studio mug because it's one I've done for decades. I make a lot of shade mugs, but there's one that I always think of as my uh, you know, studio definition mug. I think I made the first one of those in 1983. Okay, so we've done the same as we did before. We push down, pull out. It's drying out, so I let go slowly. Pour some water in there. That first mug I threw, you might want to go back and watch that step by step several times before you actually try it. But anyway, then Pressure from the outside fairly quickly to the top of the mug so it doesn't dry out. Pressure on the top. I have no sensation in my thumb. I cut through the nerve, I think. Luckily, I don't use my thumb much. It's for the fingertips. Okay, press out. Start to press in at this point from the outside. And before you get to the top, you put a little pressure on with your fingertip to thicken the rim. Take your wooden tool, go underneath, go over the top, take the metal tool. So this mug starts wide and gets narrower and there's a sort of a hint of a belly. And I make that belly a little more accentuated by doing this with my fingers from the inside. So it comes back in and you have a little belly. I'm going to take off that water. You come up and I roll the sponge over the top. If your clay has grog in it or grit, you shouldn't do this because the sponge will bring the grit to the surface. But this is a really fine, it's a porcelain style clay. It's very much like BMX. B-Mix only goes to cone 5, and I actually, B-Mix 5 goes to cone 5, this clay is a cone 6 clay. There we go. So this is my studio shape mug. So it's a little different to the other one because it doesn't have the actual belly going back in towards the foot. it down once you've got a lump of clay on the wheel and you've cut it off you end up with that nice little thin piece of clay there that actually holds the next piece of clay down easier so I put my elbow into the wall there both hands even pressure and then let go when you feel like it stopped wobbling I won't go slow on this point because you've seen the slow motion one and now I'm just repetitively throwing so if you want to see it again, go back, rewind the video, and you can see step by step. Yeah, my thumb has, I don't even feel the clay sliding under my thumb. Oh, 
Well, that one had a little bump in it. Squash it down a little bit so you hardly see it. I might trim some off that one, I'm not sure yet. Sometimes if there's a little hard piece of clay inside the clay wall, it will make it go up a little bit unevenly. And it's not much, but I feel a little bit. But if it's not much, you can just squish down with your fingertip like that and make it level again. But if you're in doubt, you know we hate doing this, but you can always just put the pin in after I thickened it a bit like that and take off that and it didn't do it that time. The other day I did one of these and it was perfect. And then you can simply, you could use the leather at this point actually as well, that would help round that off, but you can do it with your fingertips just like that. It will make it harder to trim if that was a little bit uneven there. Foot. This is a Shimpo Whisper wheel. Now, when you make a mug that has a narrow opening at the top like this, you've got to make sure it's at least reasonably open so somebody can get their mouth over the rim without their nose touching the other side of the mug. That always feels a little funny when I drink out of a mug and it's got too narrow at all. Although it does keep the drink warm for a long time. Yeah, cafe au lait type balls, the coffee gets cold almost straight away. All right, you've got the idea. I'm gonna throw 24 mugs, so I'll see you later. I have just been sent in the mail, and I just tried them out to see if they work before I do a video on it, um, a set of handle making tools um, from www.artisanpotterytools.com. Um, I pull my handles normally, but I know having taught classes that uh, making handles is not as simple as it looks. Um, so these would make it very easy for somebody who wanted to make some handles um, without really learning the skill of pulling handles but I still think you should learn how to pull handles um, but anyway I'm just going to demonstrate these so you can see what they look like and then I've got 24 mugs to put handles on as you saw earlier so this one is like a actually very similar to the handle that I actually make um, for my coffee mugs because I've always had that little thumb nick in it. Um, and all you do, I've been dipping them in water first, um, and you pull it, if you can see. Let's try this side. I'm keeping the actual, the, the, the joint part right at the top, so I know it's gonna be easy to pull the handle out. So obviously it leaves a little overlap. And it's almost identical to the handle I pull myself. Except it's got a deeper groove in it. This one has less of a deep groove in it. So let's see what that one does. So you gotta do it so you just barely leave any clay above the surface, otherwise you'll end up wasting a lot of clay. 
and then you simply pull it out and you end up with a handle very similar like I said to the ones I do Now you've got this little bit of clay left over that I'll cut off with my harp in a second. Um, but this one doesn't have any groove in it at all. Oh, it almost pulled all the way through itself anyway. I wonder if that would. Oh, look at that, it just pulls right out. There was an air bubble. I felt that as I pulled through. There was an air bubble in the clay or something. Maybe it's a piece of hard something or other. It's a new block of clay. But anyway, this one. Oh, I think that, yeah, there's something in the clay there. But we'll see. So it was easy enough to pull through. Now there's not enough there to actually do another one. But what I'm saying is, you get one of these harps, you can use anything, just a guitar wire will be fine. You can pull it, and then you'll just need to wedge this little bit of clay up again. I guess the advantage of pulling handles is you don't end up with this piece of clay that you then have to wedge. But pulling handles, I used to show people, and it is tricky learning how to just stroke the clay gently rather than, you know, pulling. Because it's called pulling, but you're not really pulling. You're stroking the clay. Now, that one is a much bigger handle. So that's what a much bigger strap handle might be too big for a coffee mug. That's more of a large pitcher one. And that was from that handle pull there. Just around a, a sort of tube. Yeah, the wind is howling out there still. It looks so sunny. So just a round coil. This is a nice way of making coils. Actually, if you want to um, make a coil pot, it gives you perfect coils every time by the look of it. So those are the five of these. Um, so www.artisanpotterytools.com. Um, that would make it a lot easier for you to actually make handles. Um, Pulled handles always have the same look on them too, so that's the other part. Um, but there you go. Very quick to make a bunch of little handles. I did some short ones first to play with it, and then I did the big longer ones. All right. Okay, these are the handles that I just extruded or pulled they weren't pulled I'm not sure what you would call it they were tooled so I can treat them the same way as a regular handle now uh, these are the mugs I threw earlier well yesterday um, so I would thicken up the join handle and this is just because this is how I do it there are other ways of doing handles attaching them to pots um, and since I'm used to pulled handles, I always have a thicker area at the top. And these ones are symmetrical all the way along, so it's a different kind of thing. So I don't have that to, to actually work with up there. And, and, and almost like, I guess, you would attach it by just pushing in rather than, be I usually bend down and curl it up and put it in. 
And this one, I'm just going to treat it the way the handle feels like it needs to be treated. And just have it pushed in. So you can do these handles. Um, I would say that you can learn how to put handles on fairly quickly. Like first try, you'll get some nice even handles. But I like to join my clay with a little bit down in the bottom there to strengthen where the handle's joining, which is why I always end up with that thicker area down there. So I'm still gonna put my little lump of clay in there because uh, it, I just like to make sure that the customer can't actually break a handle at the join area. Because if it breaks at the join area, they can say, you know, you didn't join it properly. If it snaps in the middle, that's because it was hit. So it's easy to define when a handle breaks, I mean, whether it was the manufacturer's fault or whether it was the, the producer's fault, I should say, or whether it was a, a customer fault from banging it. So there's my extra thickness there at the bottom. top there. I always have one eye that sees something a little differently to the other so I always feel like my handles always have a slant to one side a little bit. That's just the feature of my handle I guess. And then I smooth it in. So it works identical to the way I normally put my handles on even though it's symmetrical. My handles are thick at the top and they get narrower all the way to the bottom. And these handles are symmetrical all the way down. So it gives you an advantage with that. You don't want to take it too fast because then you won't be able to see it. But I'm simply shaping the handle. Yeah, I did it again. I have that little slight slant to the bottom. It sort of goes to the, the right a little bit every time I put a handle on. There you go, it's, uh, you can't really see it there. It's a big handle, I like big handles. Um, and then let's try a different one here. I've got these really long ones, they're much too big for a uh, mug. So what I'm gonna do, because I like that thicker area, is just kind of spread it out a bit at the top there. And I've got a nice thicker area up there and then wet it. And then once again, we'll just join it the same way. I rub it, my mugs are, are very soft. I don't score and scratch because I apply the clay to the, the clay handle to the pot when they're both the same softness, which is soft enough to bend the mug out of shape if you're not careful. My sponge is getting in the way there and then pull it down. This is a very wide hand. I'm not even gonna try the widest one because that's not meant for. So I'm moving it to the left a little bit deliberately there. Snap some off, turn it up. It's very thick, very thick handle. See, I'm bending the mug out of shape a bit. So that one's on. Now what about the round handle? We've got these little round ones here that... Let's wet it a little bit so it's got a nice stickiness to it. And then where it's gonna go on the top. Move it around, up and down, side to side. If these, mug, these mugs are bendable, see, I can bend, can you see that? They're so soft, they're bendable. I always join my mugs at that stage. And you can use a yogurt carton to actually... Um, and this is, what this handle desires is to be just a, a loop. Now let's make sure I don't get it to the right. I'm going to pull to the left a little bit. I 
was going to say this one is asking to be put on just as a, a, co a, a like a, a coil so it looks like a coil so I'm not going to do any join extras and I've always like I just said felt like you need to add a bit of extra clay where the join is but I don't think this handle would ask for that to be um, but I'm going to put my brush at the bottom down there push back a little bit and then using the ferrule or the plastic end of the handle just rub it in pull down the handle to the pot so I'm dragging a little bit of clay from the handle to the pot and rubbing it in same underneath there I don't like that shape. Where are we looking at there? I don't like that shape at all, so I'm going to have to play with it. Let's pull this around so you can see. But it means that you don't have a lot of excess, excess clay holding that handle on. But I want to make sure that handle has a nice curve to it. This clay was not holes so it's not as wet as I'm used to them being when I actually play with them with the brush and all that. That looks like a nicer shape. Now a lot of people do this style handle where you've just got a round coil but I actually like it. It sort of goes evenly, like a, it's symmetrical all the way down. I've always liked my handles to have a shape where it's, it's coming up like that, rather than an even curve that goes back in. Um, but that is your, your aesthetics. You can do that any way you want. But the join that's there is no thicker than the join up there really um, and that's what always worried me with handles they needed a little bit of extra clay in those areas just to really make sure that they're, they're they can take a thump you know doing the dishes you know handles get clobbered around in that washing bowl or even in a dishwasher right, so i just like that extra bit of clay um, what else do we have here? There's another one. And this has the groove going down. It's a shorter handle here. So let's thicken the top and the bottom. Just a little bit. So that gives it a little extra thickness there. And let's make sure my pot is going to accept this let's do the smaller one here so handle aesthetics it's it's once again it's personal choice so this is movable it's easy to bend in and out the handle has only been you know uh, tooled uh, you know half an hour or just about ago so they're very soft and then i simply push together no scoring and scratching necessary as long as both surfaces are tacky with some moisture, they'll join together. And make sure you press underneath as well. And then the same with the bottom here. Make sure it's level in a slide side to side, side to side, up and down a little bit, wiggle side to side, just to make sure that you've got some friction and that joins them and then using the plastic back end of the brush. You could use a modeling tool for this. So I just thickened up a, an extrude, a, a handle that was very even by thickening the bottom and the top to make it a little bit more satisfactory for my, my kind of needs when I'm putting a handle on. I actually, you know, when I, I have customers who bring things back They've had them years, but they broke. 
uh, and and people have actually, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine, but basically people have kind of made it feel like it's my fault. I didn't make it properly. I made it too thin or something. And um, so I like to be able to defend my position by knowing that I do things really well. I've had mugs that, well, I've still got mugs that have lasted three decades. And then I've also had mugs that I've kept and broken them within a year because I dropped them on a, regu a, a hard floor. So things can just get broken. I actually replaced a bowl last year that somebody had had about four years and broken it. And they said, you know, it broke too easy. So I replaced it, didn't even argue. Because it happens so rarely, but I just felt like it's better to keep the customer happy. And they did buy other things, so. But I know my pieces are made well because I've been doing it for 47 years. Going on 50. There you go. So this is the symmetrical handle modified a little bit, thickened up at the ends to actually make it. And that one is about as nice as my own pulled handles. I kind of like that, that shape there. It could actually go a little higher up here, I feel like. Once again, personal choices about the aesthetics. Could even straighten that up a little bit. Instead of it's a curve, I'm just kind of pulling up to make it straighter. So I think the handle has a nicer shape. And when I actually, because most of my handles have my little button, since I didn't add any clay up there, I always feel like the button that I put on, pressed into that location, will add to some thickness appearance up there anyway. And that makes it feel to me a little bit better. and then go around and just make sure you don't leave any fingerprints on anything. And we have one more. Oh, that one didn't get smoothed in here. So whenever you're smoothing one in, I always put a, a damp, moist, not soaking wet paintbrush just opposite where I'm pressing, wet my thumb, and I've got lots of pressure to push back on there with the paintbrush. And when you take the paintbrush out, you can often see a mark where the paintbrush was. And be careful you don't stick the paintbrush to the actual clay, so I move it a little bit every so often. And then a little bit of clay, that join area in there. I saw that uh, my old stomping ground where I went to college was on the news this morning in Bristol, in England. That's where I went to college at Bower Ashton, back in the 1970s. Just down from the Clifton Suspension Bridge. And I lived in a flat there that was overlooking the football team that was right there. I can't remember if it was Bristol City or Bristol Rovers. We could actually get on the roof of the house and watch the games. All right. Yeah, that, that, the extruding of the handle, it, the clay never gets softer. So I'm used to the handles also being a little bit more pliable when you put them on. Trying to do this so you can see. But I can't see the handle shape at this point. Anyway, but I would prefer, like I said, to go up a little bit straight on the bottom there and then come in from a little above at the top. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer then. Make your little thumbprint. Personal choice here, of course. 
I've always thought you could put your initials in there. Whenever a stamp that has your initials in it, and that would be your way of signing your pops. Go ahead, go ahead and do it. That would be kind of neat to see everybody trying to... Because it's always on the bottom anyway, but what's to stop you having your little initials right there? Especially if you can create something nice from your initials. Okay, so there's another mug. Um, the ones we have left are not really the thickness for the mugs. Um, so let's just do one of my own and show you the difference. Here's my handle, yeah, pulled handle. Thicken it up, it's much softer because I pulled it with water all over it. Um, I pull, apply it by rubbing backwards and forwards, up and down. And then I curve it, bring it in the bottom. These are actually not as big as the handles that I just you know, tooled. Um, and so aesthetically, I feel like they're a little bit um, nicer, but functionally, maybe the thicker handles are better because they would be able to take a much bigger hit. There you go. And my thumb is getting better, but I have no sensation in the end of my thumb, and I can slice through it. But the nail is coming off, so... But I, I actually broke a plate washing up last night because I just couldn't feel it as I... It was in my finger and thumb. That might come back, I suppose. So this is my normal handle. Pull up a little bit there. Make sure there's no mess on it. I'll take your little bowl of clay. And then I can put a soft yogurt carton or a plastic cup into these. Uh, if you feel like they're not circular enough for you, that re-straightens the top. But these are handles made from, it's made by an artist called Bill Wright. I think uh, it's www.artisanpotterytools.com. Handles that can be used by a student and get a nice even handle every time from the word go and at the same time you might want to learn how to pull a handle too but i think that speed wise these handles are just as fast so let's see if any of them look ugly stand back myself and look now. That one's probably my least favorite, the coil one, because I like strap handles. But all of them look normal. I think that one just feels a bit weaker up there for me, um, and it's quite a big handle but I've all they're gonna shrink and I want I like my customers to be able to get three or four fingers in the handle so they really can easily pick it up older people get arthritis in their hands and they need to be able to pick things up easily and um, I sell pottery to all age groups um, but, um, but that's a nice set of new handles I'll let them dry normally and we'll see how they dry